Good morning, everybody, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I need to check the time. Okay. I would like to share with you this morning. Uh, this is a different sermon to what I preached in the past. This sermon is called People That Jesus Speak Well of Them. If you have a Bible, you can open the Bible at the first chapter of John. It's from verse 43. It was at the beginning of Jesus' uh, ministry. So the first chapter of John is from verse 43. was uh, when Jesus Christ started his ministry. It was... After the time that uh, John the Baptizer spoke well of Jesus, saying that uh, this is a Lamb of God, which um, giveth his life for the world. It was at the time when Jesus found Peter, Simon Peter, Andrew, his brother John, James. But the message that I want to share with you this morning is about one certain disciple of Jesus. So that's why I say people that Jesus speak well of them. So, so it's from verse 43. I will read till the end. The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and say unto him, follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets is right, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and say of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus, as, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I say unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that this is the message that you want me to share with the brothers and sisters gathered together in your name this morning here. And I believe that this is going to touch someone's heart this morning, whether it is here in person or online. Because I know that the message that you gave to us are no by mistakes. I know that in my heart that you are a God of love and the God of peace. Please, Lord, guide me while I will share your word this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, so I want to start. Many of us, when we were children, or uh, we as the parents, me and my children are not yet in the school, but uh, some of you who already have children, your children being already adults or even uh, teenagers, every time when they're going to school, you're expecting to hear a good news from that school regarding to your child, right? Saying, oh, my child took, he has a, or she has an A grade. She did well. She studied well. You know, since the foundation of the world, we read from the beginning that we all have, we all want other people to speak good of us. You know, 
So this is the this is why I say regarding to the school me personally when I was a child when my mom was called to the school this is between me and you I was a bit afraid <laughs> the teacher might have say something wrong to mom or to my dad Here in this passage of the Bible we have this disciple called Nathaniel Probably you already know that I was referring to him when I say the message that is called people that Jesus speak well of them. You see all the disciples of Jesus from the beginning of John all the way to beginning of chapter 2. There was just one man that Jesus spoke well of them, of him, sorry, which it was Nathaniel. He said to Nathaniel, Behold an Israelite in whom is no guile. You know, guile can uh, refer to, it's, it can be like a synonym to deceit, something that deceives, someone that hides something, someone that uh, always has either he's a hypocrite or he has a double mind. Someone who thinks to do evil to other people. So, hearing, seeing here that Jesus says to Nathaniel, Behold an Israelite in whom is no guile. So, I want you to keep this in mind with, in regard to Nathaniel, because I want to give you another uh, Bible verse later on. There was a story that, it's a real story this. I know this is not related to the Bible, but it was something that happened in the past. It was in Romania. There, was a, there were this group of children. This, again, I said this is a real story. There were this group of, of children who were, they were not actually children. They were like uh, teenagers close to being in their 20s. And they were either preachers, missionaries, or they were doing works for the gospel. And uh, they journey, let's say, after uh, preaching, after sharing the gospel, doing a lot of good deeds in the name of Jesus Christ, they journey together to a lake. They wanted to have a barbecue together, to have some good time together. And out of sudden, one of them wanted, wanted to go to swim into that lake. He didn't realize the catastrophe that was going to happen because of him choosing to do that thing. As they go into the lake, so again I say this is a real story. It was with a, a man of God who said that he will never forget what happened there. So as they swim together, out of sudden, because it wasn't a normal lake that it was more like a moving lake. It was more like how you see today, like uh, if you go to Victoria Park, you see it's more like a river, a big river. And it, as they swim there together, they realize that the, the water was not stable. And yet one of them chose to stay till it was, he went into being in a very critical condition there. Like he was not able to go outside. And as his friends saw him that he struggled there to go out, instead of like any of them to jump, to save him, to rescue him, they prayed for him. And let me tell you one thing. There was one man who was just passing by. Just one man. So that's why I said this is not related to the Bible yet. But this, it was just that man who was passing by. We didn't know what was, his, what was his doing, where he was going to. We don't know any of that. But this man, when he saw that young lad being in that river that was in a very dangerous situation, he didn't even hesitate. He jumped to save him. And while he was rescuing him, the, the waves, the water was too strong. It was moving too fast to save both of them, 
to for both of them to go out from the water. So what he did, he managed to rescue that small child. He was, of course, a teenager. But he didn't manage to go out anymore. So and they found him two days later. He was dead. And that young evangelist, he said that even now, he cannot forget what has happened. That someone... For his mistake, he was willing to give his life just to save him. Imagine, so this was just one of the examples. So imagine about the actions of Jesus Christ that was done at the cross. Imagine if that man who was passing by, who he didn't even know that young lad, was willing to give his life just to save that man, not realizing that he was going to die. Imagine Jesus Christ who knew you even from when you were even born. How would Jesus Christ feel saying that this is my brother that I, I'm willing to give my life for him. This is my sister that I'm willing to give my life for her. People that Jesus speak well of them. So again, I say that this was one of the examples that I wanted to share with you. Proverbs chapter 22. If you open up Proverbs chapter 22. So this man who gave his life. This man, simple man, who was just passing through, who gave his life for that young lad, he didn't know. This is a, this is a really famous story in Romania with that man. This man who came and who was on his way, who gave his life for this young lad, never even thought that he would be remembered. A good name is rather to be chosen. So this is Proverbs chapter 22 from the beginning. I'm going to read just the first verse. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And loving favor rather than silver and gold. So you see here, you know, sometimes people tend to say, I love you to other either siblings, other friends, families, children, parents, grandparents, and so on. But do we really mean that? When we say, I love you. Are we showing that through our actions that we really love them? Do we show this that we care for them? Again, there was another story. Uh, this was in Romania. Again, I'm going to share with you a few stories from Romania. We have a dear missionary in Romania. Who is uh, she knows the life in Romania now um, and uh, the poverty that is there. She, she knows. So this, this story that I want to share with you, it was under the communist time. I was not even born at that time, by the way. I'm very young. <laughs> but I read in this book, it was based on uh, real actions. It was with this man who, who used to work in an office. And uh, out of sudden, like, without reason, he said at the beginning, he and his friend, both they were in the office, they, both of them work in the office, they decided that they want to do something, something that will profit other people. And they didn't know that the impact that they're going to have on other people will be so great. So they looked online back then. Online, it was an internet like today. 
online means like uh, there were uh, there were still like uh, newspapers, magazines, or uh, the yellow book. How is even here today? They looked on the newspapers or uh, on the or yellow book at charity things like how they can help other people in what way they found all type of uh, charities but they came across again during the communist time the medicine and the people were not treated well like today in the healthcare they had just one nurse that was looking after a, a whole room just one nurse or one uh healthcare assistant. And during that time, they found, they found a care home, how we say it today, which was with people with all kinds of sicknesses, disabled people. They were from children all the way up to adults, all the way to being old. And they say that as they came across that care home, they found one person sitting in the garden looking for someone to actually visit them. Imagine the things that they came through, like these people who were either disabled or having all kinds of sicknesses, knowing that they were not visited, not even once in months by any people, any of the family members, anything like that. Again, I say, because during the communist time, the, tra the traveling was restricted. People were not allowed that much to travel. This is what I learned from, uh, of course, watching documentaries and reading books, because I was not born by that time. Uh, but again, as they came across that, that care home, seeing all type of sicknesses that the people have imagine what they saw these people these two people who came he never had any experience like they never experienced such things like this like uh, looking after other people they always worked they had like generic jobs like working in the office doing simple things and to jump from an office job to caring for people, that's a great task. And that person who was actually in the yard waiting for someone to visit them was actually a blind woman who was in a wheelchair. And they, when they came closer to her, because uh, during the communist time they were allowed, they were required to work six days per week. Only one day they had off. This is what my mom told me. They were only one day off. Six days they were required by the law to work. So imagine having one Sunday off and spending that time just to visit people who really, who are really in need, who are desperate for other people to visit them. And these two people, they started to come regularly there. They started to look after them. And they realized that this is when. Because these two people, I forgot to tell you that they were Christians. This is when they realized that this is what God is calling them to do. So you see some people, they are called for to do that certain task. Other people are called to serve in the church. Other people are called to be missionaries. Other people are called to wash the saints' feet. Other people are called to cook. Other people are called, again, for all type of tasks. But imagine when these two people, after they choose to do that thing, what was the reaction? What was the message that was given in heaven regarding to these two people? You know, if you go to Matthew chapter 10, 
I'm going to take you through quite a few Bible verses. So these two people, they... They had so many opportunities, so many options to seek after riches in their free times. They had so many options to do things that they really enjoyed to do. They had so many things that they could do, and yet they choose in that only time that they had free to visit people in need. People who were not even visited for months. And not only that, they were able even to share Jesus Christ with them. To share the goodness of God and salvation in Jesus Christ with them. Not only with words, but with actions also. Sometimes we think that uh, the healthcare assistants, they are... Um, they are not treated how they should be treated because this is a very hard job to do. Compassion is a very, and kindness, these two are very hard things to do in today's world where selfishness is everywhere. People thinking about riches and about their own selves. So here, if you go to Matthew chapter 10, it was at the time when Jesus sent his disciples to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, and preach the gospel of the kingdom. So Matthew chapter 10. So if we read from uh, verse 29, from verse 29 all the way to verse 33. So here Jesus gave an example of uh, how precious we are. And he says here, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall, deny, shall confess me before man. So he said, whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before man, him will I also confess. Confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Imagine the people who were left for weeks or months without anyone caring for them. And yet Jesus said that they are more valuable than many sparrows or any type of birds, or any type of animals. And not only that, caring for them is one thing, but sharing Jesus Christ with them is a completely different thing. You know, we tend to, to care about people in a physical way, like, let's say, cooking, uh, uh, ironing the clothes, uh, going with the children outside, uh, having these type of things. We show that we care for them. But sharing with them the salvation and the love of Christ, that's not what many people are doing. So this is the thing that Jesus, I believe in my heart that Jesus actually refers to when he says, whosoever shall confess me before man, not only in word, but indeed also in actions, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. Imagine the words that Jesus say to our Heavenly Father. Look, look, 
Look at this person. Look at my brother. He shared me. He is not afraid to share my name with other believers, with other people, not believers, but also unbelievers. I want to share with you also. So here Jesus say that he will confess him before his heavenly father, before our heavenly father. To understand how is that happening, if we go to, I want to read from uh, Job, the first chapter. So the first chapter of Job. Before I read this, I want to tell you that everywhere you will see on this earth, personally, people who speak good of you and people who speak bad of you. Me personally, I experienced that. People speaking good to me but behind my back, they were speaking bad of me. Again, I say, someone's love can be showed even when you are not face to face with that person. By speaking good of you. You see that person, he's doing good in the eyes of the Lord. You see that person, he, he did a great deed. You see that person. He feared God. Again, the Bible says, your own mouth should not praise yourself, but let others praise you. This is what the Bible says. I think in Proverbs. So here we have Job. He didn't have the Bible like how we see today. I will finish very soon. It's probably I'm coming closer to the time. Um, here we have Job, who he didn't have a Bible, he didn't have the Word of God like how we have today. He didn't have so much knowledge written in, the, in a book, in the Holy Scriptures. And yet this man, you know how he started to fear God. We read at the, at the end of the book of Job, he said that he heard about God through his ears. Only because he heard it, this is what Job replied to God when God showed to him all the wonderful things that he created. He said that, I have heard of thee by the hearing of ears. But only hearing about you, I have heard about you. And yet, he, Job, he didn't even know what was happening actually in heaven for him choosing to fear God. If we read from chap the first chapter, from verse 6, I will read from verse 6 to verse 8. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? So you see, the evil one is the one who speaks only bad behind your back. He is the accuser. So seeing the Lord and Satan actually in heaven, Satan in heaven, at that time, so now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect, and an upright man, one that fear God and eschew evil. Again, I say people that Jesus speak well of them. 
So this is the type of people that Jesus speaks well of them. Nathaniel, in whom there is no guile, there is no mischief, there is no deceit. So that was the first disciple that Jesus spoke well of him. What about the people that Jesus spoke not good of him or of them? If we go to Luke chapter 13, I will give just this... Uh, And I want us to consider ourselves. Are we among the people that Jesus speak well of us? Or if we go to, yeah, Luke chapter 13. Verse 32. It was at the time when Jesus, uh, he was uh, preaching in the synagogues. He was spreading the gospel of the kingdom of God. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He raised the dead. He proclaimed the gospel. But there were some people who came to him. And they were Pharisees. It says the same day, I'm reading from verse 31 to understand verse 32. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Go thee out, get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox. Fox can symbolize also Someone who is doing tricky things, someone who try to, someone who has a double mind, someone who try to deceive people. Go and tell that fox. Behold, I cast out devils and do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. So you see here, are we among the people that Jesus speak well of us or not good of us? Because in Matthew chapter 25, we have this group of people in Matthew chapter 25. We know, again I say that, uh, in uh, Mark chapter 7, but... I will read from chapter 25 of Matthew, but Matthew, Mark chapter 7, verse 18 says about all type of sins and deceit is one of them, that uh, these are the things which defile the man because they are coming out from the heart. So I'm going to read only this from Matthew chapter 25. Okay, it was uh, at the time when the Son of Man came. It's from verse 31. It was like when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. So is uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. So remember this. Before Jesus came and sat on the throne of his glory, remember there was a conversation between Jesus, the Father, and the angels in heaven for each individual, especially those who believe. That's why Jesus, whoever shall confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. And it says, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set 
the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. So you see here is exactly what I shared with you before, with what happened, something similar to what happened at that time with the, the two people who came to that uh, care home, seeking to, to do the good of the people who are sick. And also this one is also is connected to the, these young lads who journey beside the lake. And that man who came from nowhere and saved the young lad, but he died instead of the young lad. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? So these people, they didn't even realize that the good deeds that they were doing for other people, it was actually, they did it to the Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm going to finish now in a prayer. Probably I stay longer than I expected. But to God be the glory. Heavenly Father, I pray that this message might have touched or actually touched someone's heart. I pray that this message, message was shared for your glory and for the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, to remind us that you are a good God. To remind us that the deeds that we are doing are not because of our own self-righteousness, but it's because you are good to us. So the thing that we can do, this is the thing that we can do, Lord, to show love to other people because you first loved us. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.